Hey guys, Connor Laid here. Welcome to our fourth Academy guest speaker series. Goalkeepers, I hope you didn't think we forgot about you. Today we have two members of the Red Bulls Goalkeeper Union. We have New York Red Bulls goalkeeper coach Preston Burpo and longtime Red Bulls goalkeeper Ryan Mara. I hope all you youngsters are, you know, have a pen out and are ready to take notes because between the two of them, they have an incredible amount of time spent between the posts and lots of wisdom to share with you guys. Preston, Ryan, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Yeah, of course, thanks, for Connor. Us, Connor. Thanks for setting it up, man. It's good to see you. Of course, great to see you guys too. Uh, I'm sure that young keepers are very anxious to have all your questions answered, but first uh, let's get a quick update on how you both are doing during this difficult time. Uh, Preston, we'll start with you. How's, how's everything going? Yeah, obviously a challenging time for everyone. It took, uh, you know, a week or so to this to, for, for me to have this really set in, uh, you know, and trying to navigate, you know, the reality of being at home all day. Uh, so, yeah, I think once it did settle in, you know, figuring out a rhythm for work and trying to work from home every day and, and uh yeah i feel like we we've been productive as a staff uh you know meeting a few times uh throughout this uh for some tactical uh, discussions which has been positive and then we've been meeting with the goalkeepers every week which i think has gone really well uh so yeah i mean in the end uh, you know we've been talking a lot as a club in, in our all staff meetings connor as you know is just trying to make the best of this and and, and trying to see some positives and 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 fighting through this and, and being a part of the Red Bulls uh, has been has been great because you feel like you are a part of something. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, every Thursday I, I look forward to, to hearing a lot of people's voices and seeing a lot of people's faces. So, yeah, we've been really, really lucky here in, in the Red Bull uh, company uh, and team just to, to have such good people in charge of this thing. Hi, how's everything going with you? How are you holding up? Yeah, doing okay. You know, like Preston said, trying to make the best of a uh, of a crappy situation here. Um, you know, from a team standpoint, they've been keeping us busy with workouts. Tony's been putting us through our paces with uh, both Zoom workouts and and individual running that we have to that we have to do and and take a screenshot of the app. So there's no cheating, which is good. You know, keeping everyone honest. Um, but other than that, you know, a little bored here and there, but can't complain too much the family and and friends are are safe and and healthy so you know that's all that really matters right now good yeah i joined in on one of those uh zoom workouts for you fans i uh, i've been out of the game too long and you know these guys are really working hard out there so <laughs> there, there definitely is no cheating and as much as i tried i couldn't i couldn't hide in there so <laughs> you did a great job and you guys uh you know we're proud of the work you're doing right now both uh you know, from home and, you know, we're, we're just super anxious to see you guys back on the field. So uh, we're going to get into some questions right now. If you guys are all ready. Great. Let's do it. All right. Let's see from the Red Bulls Academy. Tell us a little bit about your playing background. I guess, uh, Preston, we can start with you. Gosh, uh, playing back. <laughs> uh, I didn't start playing goalkeeper till a uh, full time until I was about 15. Uh, you know, Tried my my skills as a as a field player up until then. Dabbled in the goal. Finally, I realized that I wasn't going to make it as a field player, and felt like I had something as a goalkeeper. For, you know, I'll skip the the glorious high school years, but uh, ended up going to Southern New Hampshire, a small little Division two school, uh, and then from there bounced around uh, playing in the lower divisions to end up finally in the MLS, which was which was a dream of mine for a long time. Uh, you know, I ended up with Chivas USA team that, that's not around anymore, uh, for two years. And those were two really great years for me, just because I got to play under two amazing coaches, Bob Bradley, the first year, and then Precky the second year. Uh, that's where I met Jesse Marsh, who I eventually became colleagues with as a, as a coach. Uh, so those are two really meaningful years just on and off the field. And then from there, bounced around a couple more times and then ended up uh, in New England uh, a long time ago now. Uh, but yeah, my last year was uh, 2010, which seems like uh, decades and decades ago. But yeah, I had an amazing career, fun, met so many good people uh, and, and, and formed a lot of great relationships through the years. It's awesome. I mean, don't don't sell that 
career with the Sounders. You know, you, you barely even touched on it. You you're you know amazing there. I mean, how how was that time you know, being with that? Club? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, the relevance of the Sounders were were pretty big in the mid '90s, and then when the MLS came, kind of faded a little bit. But then obviously, when they got back in the league, I mean, they've been one of the best you know teams in the league since what 2009. I think they came back in or came in. Excuse me. Yeah, and then for me, it was always in the second division with Seattle. But yeah, nine years, uh, you know, we uh, we won a championship in 2005, which was the highlight uh, of my time there in terms of on the field. Uh, so it, great people, and it's actually pretty cool to see when you go back to Seattle to play now, uh, how many people are still working for the club that they were there fit, literally 15 years ago. So. Yeah, it just kind of it shows how great of an organization those people are out there. That's awesome. Now, Ryan, obviously, everyone knows you're a, a local guy. You know, Yonkers, born and bred. Tell, give us a little background on you. Yeah, so I started playing soccer just like every other kid probably when they're five years old. Um, and it's funny, I hated it when I was young. You know, I wasn't. I was playing the field. I wasn't great. I was just okay. And um, at that age, I was convinced I was going to the NBA. So, uh, you know, soccer didn't interest me. Um, and it's funny, I wanted to quit one year when I was about 10. I was playing, just started playing travel soccer. And out of nowhere, uh, the goalie quit midseason. He was really good at baseball and he just quit on the team. So and it's funny, he ended up playing for six or seven years in the Yankees minor league system. And he's a good friend of mine to this day. Um, but yeah, so he quit. I got thrown in goal. Um, and I just took to it. I think playing a lot of basketball and baseball growing up, you know, it's a lot of the same skills uh, that translate over into into being in goal. So, yeah, I, I quickly developed a real passion for it. Um, played, uh, went on to Fordham Prep for high school, Fordham University for college. Um, got drafted by the Red Bulls in 2012 when me and you were the were the youngsters on the team. Um, going through a lot of the same things together, which is, you know, why we're such uh, good buddies to this day. And, and yeah, so I've been with the Red Bulls now. This is my ninth year. I spent one year on loan with NYCFC, but, you know, we don't really like to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just like Preston, uh, like Preston said, just been enjoying the whole process, enjoying the journey, the ups and the downs, and, you know, meeting so many good people along the way and, just memories and friendships that I'll cherish forever, really. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of the fans out there haven't watched you play basketball, but I still think there is a potential future. Maybe after playing soccer, you may be still going to the NBA. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to get in some questions uh, submitted by some of the, our fans. Um, Anthony Suarez, uh, how did it feel being brought to the Red Bulls and being reunited with Jesse Preston? It's been an amazing experience here. The and I I talked about meeting Jesse when when we played for Chivas. He asked me to work with him for uh, in Montreal as well in 2002, uh, and then we went our separate separate ways at the end of that year. And then when he was hired in 2015 for uh, for the Red Bulls as the head coach, I mean, just so excited for him. I watched every game that year, you know, with you guys playing and man, it was just fun to watch. Uh, I mean, you guys, when you guys end up winning the supporter shield, Connor, I mean, what a, what a cool, what a cool year you guys had um, that first year with, with Jesse. And so towards the end of the year of that year, he called to ask if I'd be interested in, in, in coming, coming to New York. And the answer was absolutely. Uh, and we were able to, to, you know, navigate through that process. And then, yeah, showing up in preseason, I met you guys down in, in Florida. Uh, you guys were already a few days into your preseason. And from there, it's just been such a fun experience. I mean, just meaningful. Uh, just again, and I've touched on this, the, the people in, with Red Bull are amazing. Amazing. And the way people treat you and, and just trying to have you grow as a per not just as a footballer and as a coach, but just, as a person in general. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Jesse was a big part of that and like how he wanted that process to go. So uh, yeah, I mean, I was really lucky to spend two and a half more years working with him. Really lucky. We're very lucky to have you with the club as well. Ryan, we have a question from Snyder. Um, you know, obviously for those of, you know, 
us out on the field, it's, it's, you know, a little bit easier at times, but how do you deal with opposition fans being right behind you and some of the stuff that they're yelling at you? Um, it can be tough, you know, especially, uh, I'd say when I was a rookie playing and it's your first real exposure to that, um, some places like Philly are worse than others. You know, Philly, I'll never forget, uh, it was Mother's Day. Remember our, our rookie year, Con? We played down there. Um, and it was my parents' first trip to Philly. You know, we're from New York. We know what Philly fans are all about. But um, it was their first trip with me being on the Red Bulls down there. And, um, you know, we I think we won the game 3-2. We, we were down 2-1. We came back late and won it. It was a crazy game. And I guess they must have had like a Mara Red Bull shirt on or something. Um, and the fans, <laughs> they came outside the locker room after the game, my parents, and the fans, I guess, put it together that, you know, that was my mom and dad. And and they let them have it. And it was on Mother's Day. So that was kind of a, you know, a real introduction into, into what opposition fans could be like. But, you know, just from a bigger picture, I, I love playing away games. There's nothing better than, you know, from a goalkeeper point of view, making a big save, you know, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, everyone in the stadium's hoping they score and you're the guy that, that keeps it out of the net makes and makes the big save. And, you know, you just see and hear the place kind of deflate. And for me, I, I love that feeling. You know, I'm a little bit disappointed right now. You left out one of the most crucial parts of that story about Philly is that not only were <laughs> we rookie year, but we were sporting our rookie haircuts too. And so for That's all right. to roll the tape back and, you know, if you want to have a good laugh, you got to check out me and Ryan. We, we had, it was Wilman Conde gave us rookie haircuts right before that game. And Ryan, your, your hair almost took off in the wind. <laughs> well, yeah, he shaved like, I don't even know. He shaved like, uh, he tried to shave Red Bull into the back of our head or something. And he was a maniac, big Colombian center back. There was no saying no to this guy. And we were, well, we were whatever about it. We didn't care too much. And, uh, so that happened on like a Thursday. We played in Philly on ESPN on the, the Sunday, two or three days later. So I was telling him, like, shave everything back here. Just leave me a little something up top here. And, uh, yeah, I go put on my Twitter after the game, and, man, was I getting roasted. But at least we won, so I didn't really care too much. Speeding you, and we got the last laugh. But, yeah, that was not easy going to Philly in the first place, but especially with rookie haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, our next question from Ian Paola. Ryan, how do you keep strong during uh, – or how do you keep mentally strong going through adversity? And Preston, we're going to – we'll follow up with you. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, it can be tough, whether it's going through a big injury like we've all had, the three of us here talking, um, or whether it's going through, you know, a bad run of games. Or, you know, maybe a new coach comes in who doesn't rate you for whatever reason. There's so many things that can happen throughout the course of a career. Um, and I think, you know, you can find out a lot about a person when they're going through something like that, how they respond. You know, are they going to feel sorry for themselves and, um, and their performance is going to dip as a result? Or is it going to kind of light a fire under a guy? And whatever the case may be, say the coach, you know, benches you for a couple of games and, you know, are you going to fight even harder in training um, to prove the prove the coach wrong? And, you know, I think throughout every guy's career and even throughout your youth career within the academy, there's going to be ups and downs. And I think it's about how you uh, react through the downs that can define your career. Yeah. Preston, we'll go to you, obviously. Uh... You know, for the, the fans at home, obviously you, towards the, you know, the end of your career, you had a, a major, major injury. So how did, you know, through that process, how did you mentally stay strong and kind of deal with that? Um, yeah. There were a lot of things that, that happened uh, with me over the course of 12 months after the, the actual injury. You know, the first two minutes, guys, man, it, it was, there were some truly dark, kind of afternoons and nights and uh thankfully i had a lot of good people around me my i have an older brother that lived outside of boston at the time 
uh, and I would go to the grocery store and pick up certain things and uh, cases of certain things uh, and bring it up to, you know, his house and a lot of food. And, and uh, luckily he had time to sit on his porch with me for hours. just kind of just talking. Uh, and then from there, I had a lot of people within the New England uh, Revolution Organization that the, what they did for me, like from a psychological standpoint, emotional standpoint, was 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 really so amazing because uh, the time they spent with me and to help me rehab, and it wasn't just the physical side, but like just letting me talk through a few things. Uh, the reality was, I, I was most likely not going to be be able to get back from that injury from a physical standpoint. Um, it, so yeah, I mean, just trying to be around people that were positive, uh, kind of giving me reassurance that whether I was going to be able to play, 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 whether I play again or not, I was going to be able to be active again. And that was important for me. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it took me about 12 months really to kind of get over it. Uh, and then, you know, the person in my life who's been with me for years, uh, I went back and moved, moved back with her to Denver and that was a big part of me getting back also. Uh, you know, and so it took me, like I said, it was about almost exactly a year later that I ended up running a half marathon that, that she actually got me into. And, you know, ever, ever since the, the half marathon, I was like, okay, that that's behind me. So it was, a, it was a lot of people, uh, that helped me through the way. Uh, it was me just kind of a lot of self-reflection and kind of where I was in life and how I wanted to get through things. And, uh, but luckily again, it was the people that were around me that helped through, helped me through it. Yeah. I think that's uh, the one thing, you know, between the three of us, obviously big, big injuries, you know, Preston, you're, you had a, you had a big one. And I think that's the biggest thing is surrounding yourself with great people. And, you know, you, you don't surround yourself with the right people who knows, you know, what will happen. So good question, Ian. Uh, next question from Rebels Academy. Guys, do you have any superstitions that you have, you know, before games or, you know, maybe the night before, you know, is it eating something or day of? Um, no, I, I kind of made it a point to never get into that. I didn't want um, – I think that's a, that could be a little exhausting, you know, and then you worry if you don't – if you didn't do the certain thing the night before the game or – you know, in the locker room before the game that, oh, man, I'm not going to play well because of this. Maybe, if anything, I touch the crossbar as I run out into the field, and that's pretty much it. All right. All right. How about you, Preston? Do you have anything? When I played, I mean, I like to take a nap in the afternoon. I like to earn, uh, eat certain things. I'd always drink a cup of coffee driving into Seattle for the game, but – as a coach, I mean, it's more so checking the list of what, you know, really what you need to have done before the game. And, uh, but yeah, as a coach, not really superstitions at this point. No. <laughs> um, question from Jalen. Um, Preston, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Rai. Uh, okay. How do you feel making your professional debut? Gosh. Uh, I mean, my professional debut is, I mean, this is, you guys, this is so amazing. I mean, it's 1995 playing for the Boston Storm. Uh, I mean, yeah, 95 is crazy. Um, we, our coach from college was the head coach of this team. And he took us down to a couple games and uh, it was like a tournament game uh, down in Miami. You know, and it's a bunch of guys up from New Hampshire that had, hadn't seen the sun in about five months. We had a few days before the first game to do some training. And, man, I mean, the sunburns that we had, it's just, you know, and the, 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 the long dinners that we had, you know, the first couple of nights we were down there. Uh, and then finally, my first professional game. I mean, kidding aside, my back was so burned. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this game. And I, you know, I end up having one of those games. You're like, I, I was awesome. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but, man, the excitement when the whistle blew, because this was the first time I'd played post-college, uh, you know, making a little bit of money, you know. And it was, man, what what a feeling. I mean, just total elation. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun night for sure. Awesome. How about you, Ryan? Yeah, I remember uh, you were there, Con. We was down in Dallas, um, the first game of the 2012 season. Um, 
and I remember being super nervous. You know, I think anyone that says they're not nervous before their debut is probably lying to you a little bit. Um, I was very nervous. Uh, I, I had just gotten drafted from Fordham a couple months ago and went from playing in front of probably 200 people a game in the Bronx to, you know, like 20,000 that day in Dallas. And it was on, uh, I think it was on NBC Sports, national TV. I had everyone that I knew watching the game back home and, uh, you know, stepping onto the field with, with guys like uh, Henri and, you know, the guys that we had. We had such a, a good – uh, older group of guys back then. And um, yeah, I was nervous as anything, but I remember uh, looking over my dad and my brother flew down for the game and I, I knew where they were sitting. I looked over right before the, uh, the whistle blew for the game to start. And that kind of put me at ease a little bit, you know, just knowing they were there. They've watched me play since I was, you know, under eights. Um, and then, you know, I think it's like every game still to this day. Once you get your first couple touches, you really settle down. And, you know, we lost that game two to one. But I remember I played pretty well, had a couple big saves. And um, I remember getting to halftime of the game being like, oh, you know what? That, that wasn't as bad as I thought. <clears throat> you know, I can hold my own here. And, uh, you know, I think getting to that point, getting over that first hurdle, uh, it was definitely a, a building block and, you know, you realize oh, I belong out here, you know, I'm one of these guys now. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a big confidence booster. Yeah. Ryan's selling himself short a little bit here. He stood on his head that day and it was in about 95 degree heat in the middle, right. of, you know, <laughs> the middle of the day in Dallas. That was not an easy place to have your first game. Um, you know, Preston, I wish I could have seen your debut, but I was about like six or seven. So you know, I wish I could have been down there in the sunburn in the street. Yeah, yeah, long time ago now. <laughs> Preston, uh, we have a question for you um, from the Rebels Academy. What are the key attributes that you look for in a in a goalkeeper? You know, technically, tactically, physically, kind of. Good question. And there's different things that the academy staff and myself are thinking about for for different age groups. The biggest thing we look for, and is, is, is it Anthony that asked this? Suarez? Uh, this from the Red Bulls Academy. Yeah. So he, Anthony's been on, we've been doing some goalkeeper meetings and we've, we've had the Academy kids on there and Anthony was, has been on there. And, and something we've been talking about is being brave, like kids that are just brave and have self-confidence and self-belief. And so regardless whether it's at the, U12 level or, you know, up through the, the higher levels, the, the older age groups, it's, it's someone that, that has, you know, a, a real belief in, in what they're doing. And, and, and so, so there's that. And then, you know, then we take a look at athleticism. And then there's been a, a lot of discussions with Jeremy Proud, the Academy goalkeeper coach and our scout and how we want to think about looking for goalkeepers. And a lot of it is, are they technically sound? Okay, maybe, you know, but we can teach that. Are they tactically sound? At U12, probably not. The answer is probably no. But all that type of stuff will come as long as they're willing to work hard uh, and they show that they really, really want to be a goalkeeper. Uh, so, the, you know, the athleticism thing, uh, you know, technically that'll come, tactically that'll come. Uh, but the, but the, again, the mentality is a big piece on, on being a goalkeeper, really big piece. For that, I was a goalkeeper back in the day. Yeah. I've, I've heard a story. Yeah. Yeah. The, the goals got bigger and then I, I grew out of the position. I had to get on the field. I was going to say yeah. it had to be before the goals uh, went to the full size. <laughs> 100%. I lasted a couple of games once I got the big size and now I was like, I'm out of here. And then just kind of, yeah, just to, to add to that, I mean, you look at you look at uh, one of the goalkeepers that we have now and Kendall McIntosh. Now, does he fit the physical profile of, of Ryan and David Jensen? No, he doesn't. But what he does have is some of the physical attributes that, that make up for, for, his, for his height, right? And so, you know, and we've done, we've kept track of him for years now and his mentality is amazing. And, and I think he's fit right into this group. So, you know, in terms of height, it's, it's, that's, that's not a, a, a total factor for what we look for. Yeah. Very good athlete and great shot stopper for sure. Um, let's see, Ryan, you, we got a question for you from, let's see, Kieran. 
how do you feel or how do you deal with defenders that don't listen to your instructions? Oh, they're the worst. <laughs> Sorry, how do you <laughs> how do you deal with them? Um I think as a goalie, you know, you you're at the unique position on the field where you can see the whole field. And, you know, I think it's something as you mature as a goalkeeper uh, and gain more experience that the way you kind of bark at your guys and, and give them instruction, give them direction, you're, you're able to potentially solve so many problems before they even happen. Um, you know, I think it's, it, it also helps when you know your guys in front of you. Um, and you know which guys you can, you know, maybe if they're not pulling their weight, you can get into them a little bit and, you know, show them a little tough love, if you want to call it, uh, knowing that, okay, that'll get them going. Whereas there's other guys where, you know, you have to be uh, a lot more encouraging and kind of build them up um, because that's what works for them. So, you know, I think it, it, it varies, uh, you know, player to player. Um, and how you approach them and, and give them instruction. But I think, and I'm sure Preston would agree with me from, from a coach's standpoint, they like to see the goalkeepers and really any position on the field. It's not just goalkeepers, but they like to see guys who, um, you know, both lead by example and kind of get everyone else going around them. You know, you look at, you know, that's how Sean Davis has been for us. And especially now this year as a captain, um, if you're not pulling your weight, you know, you have to be held accountable um, and it's nothing personal, but our goal is to win games and, and, and improve. So, you know, I think obviously from a goalkeeper's point of view, um, you know, a big part of our position is communication, but I think that goes for any position on the field that um, you want a guy who's going to, you know, make everyone around him better. And a big part of that is by communicating. Yeah. Touches on what Preston talked about, you know, being brave. You know, brave to have those difficult conversations. Maybe it's it's never going to be easy, you know, calling someone out. But it's a little kind of thing like Coach Armas talks about is like not letting people around you cheat yourself out of being successful. And so these are the types of things that you definitely have to develop develop as a young goalkeeper is you know being brave to talk to the people around you and getting them in the right positions. Yeah, and I'll just add on, uh, Ryan. I mean, first of all, it's a great question. And Ryan, to you, to your point, you're you're talking to certain guys in different ways, right? You can talk to one guy one way. So you're going to have to figure out the other guy the other way, and that's a little bit of the psychology of of goalkeepers and uh, and how to how to communicate. So, yeah, I mean, Kieran, I mean, trying to figure out what you can say to each player and to try to get the most out of, and that takes time, and that takes time learning the player uh, off the field as well. And trying to understand what what can how can you talk to that person? And Con, one one more thing, I think you know, I, I think as you get older, um, and you become a better player yourself, and you know, ninety nine percent of the time, I'm going to be able to take care of what I have to do. My, you know, I'm one out of the eleven guys on the field, and I I know more often than not, I'm going to take care of my own business. I think when you're confident in yourself and your own ability that helps you um, have the confidence to, to organize and communicate with the guys around you. Cause you don't have to worry about you, you yourself playing well, you know, you're gonna. Well, put. Definitely well put. I hope you guys are taking notes at home because these guys are giving you great advice. Um, all right, let's, we got a question from Nick Stokes. Um, what are you doing during your, during this quarantine to keep yourself in good shape and maintain sharp handling? Um, well, besides, like I, I was talking about before, Tony giving us, uh, our strength coach, Tony, giving us the, uh, the zoom workouts, putting us through our paces and giving us some individual running and, you know, for us, goalkeeper specific, uh, kind of shorter sprint work, which has been good. And, um, I've got into yoga a little bit and Con, you know, you've known me for a long time and never thought those words would come out of my mouth. Um, but I've also, I think Kieran Dalton's on the call. I've been working with him a bit. Uh, you know, his family knows my cousins. So we've been meeting up with another friend of ours uh, and doing some goalkeeper training. Um, so it's been good. We've just been trying to, Preston's been sending us over some, uh, some, some daily programs to do. We've been meeting two or three times a week and, you know, not doing anything crazy. Just, you know, getting a good sweat, a good workout. And, you know, I've enjoyed it. Um, 
obviously it's keeping myself going, keeping myself sharp, but also working with Kieran and, um, you know, trying to teach him a couple things, you know, here and there, little pointers. Uh, you know, I've really enjoyed it and he's been great. And our, our other friend, uh, Mikey, has been great too. So, you know, like we were saying before, it's a, trying to make the most out of a, a crappy situation that we're all going through right now is not only a country as the world is going through. So, uh, yeah, I, I've been just trying to make the most of it. How about you, Preston? Obviously, you're a very active guy, and you know, especially you know, being being in you know the New York area, how are you being able to stay fit during the time? Yeah, a little eerie at times, uh, being kind of in the epicenter, not kind of being in the epicenter uh, of the world uh, with the, with this virus right now. But I live close to Central Park, so that's where I've been able to to get some fresh air uh for some walks uh and doing some runs i've been trying to get up early in the morning just before people are really getting out uh there's been a couple days where i need my sleep so uh you know doing some mid afternoons but try to keep it to the mornings and, and get my get my exercise there and so i'll be ready to go when we get back on the field all right, all right. the next question uh for the both of you uh it's two-parter from the rebels academy uh taking the Red Bulls out of it because we know we have the best goalkeepers in MLS, but who do you think the top goalkeeper in MLS is? And then who's your favorite goalkeeper in the world? Ooh, best in MLS. I think um, right now I'd have to, if you base it on the last couple of years, I have to say uh, Luis, Luis Robles is, has to be up there. Just look at his consistency um, you know, he, like we always say, you know, uh, between Jesse and Chris, they used to always preach. Chris still does preach it. You know, on your good days, you want to be eight, nine out of 10. And on your bad days, you want to be maybe a six and a half out of 10. You know, if you were to be honest with yourself and give yourself a rating and Luis didn't have too many bad days. Um, and even his bad days weren't that bad. So especially from a goalkeeping point of view, um, I think in Preston, you could touch on this, like as a coach, you want a guy who's going to be consistent, you know, you don't want a guy that's going to be giving up too many bad goals and you want that steady, constant presence in goal. So Luis personified that. And, you know, it's why he's been so good for, for however many years, you know, he said the last seven, eight years or whatever it's been. And, uh, so I just have to say him and, and I've always liked watching Brad Guzan play. You know, the way Atlanta plays is very demanding with uh, playing out of the back, and he's so involved in the buildup, and he makes it look easy. And it's any goalkeeper uh, knows that that is not easy. You know, you make one bad pass or one poor touch, and it's a goal, and you look like an idiot. So, uh, yeah, I'd say Luis and, and Brad have two that uh, come to mind for me. Hey, Ryan, I have, the, I have the same two in my kind of top goalkeepers uh mainly for what you said consistency with Luis and then you look at Brad since he's come back from from England uh you know he's won a championship uh MLS cup they've won they've won open cup right which says a lot to, to him as a keeper and then I also look at Stefan Fry since he came over from Toronto he had, he'd play hadn't really played much in a couple of years prior to that it seemed like it took him about a half a season to settle in out there but ever since he settled in that that year, I mean, man, he's been good, and he's just been consistent. You go through you go through all his games, and you're like, man, yeah, they had some goals scored on him, you know, over the last couple of weeks. But you don't look at Fry as the reason as why they got scored on, uh, and he's been like that now for you know for a few years. I mean, I mean, so what's it been three out of the last four? They've they've gone to the, the MLS Cup. So uh, yeah, for me, it's it's those three, and and to your point, Ryan, just consistency. I mean, game in, game out. They do what they they do what they need. Uh, you know, they fit into the style of play with their teams, and and they've been they've been just really really solid. Awesome. Uh, we got a, a little rapid fire from uh, the Red Bulls Academy. Uh, I'll just go back and forth between the two of you. You know, you got to pick one keeper between the two. Preston, Allison, or Courtois. Courtois. Rye. Allison. De Gea or Neuer? Neuer. I'll go Neuer. All right. Ter Stegen or Loris? 
Ryan? Ter Stegen. <laughs> uh, I would probably go Ter Stegen as well. And last one, Oblak or Navas? I've got Oblak. Yeah, same, Oblak. All right, there you go. If you had to pick one from the whole group, who is it? I right now I'd have to say uh, Oblak. I think he doesn't get the credit he deserves, and you know he comes up with so many big saves. And you look at his record of of shutouts. Uh, and I, obviously, Atletico is a great defensive team, so it's not just him. But um, you know the game right before everything shut down, they played Liverpool when they knocked him out of Champions League. He was unreal in a tough atmosphere, and uh, yeah, I love watching him play. Yeah, you know it's funny, guys. I, I don't watch tons of Atletico Madrid play until Champions League, but man, watching Oblak play, man, he's good. Uh, yeah, I mean Connor, gosh, I mean we've been doing some goalkeepers here recently. I mean we've watched Allison, we've watched Ederson. There's been Neuer clips. I mean it's hard to pick like who the best guy is. I mean they're all they're all they are all just so good, just so good. All right, we got a question from CJ. Um, what workouts are you doing during the quarantine? Obviously, Ryan, you touched on it. Preston, how about you? What kind of workouts are you doing? And Ryan, there's a follow-up from the yoga question, which is, what's your favorite yoga position? No, <laughs> no comment. I have to think about it. Preston, what kind of workouts are you doing? I'm uh, mainly running. It's funny, Ryan. I actually did about an hour of yoga last night. Uh, I've been, I haven't felt great uh, over the last few weeks running. My calves have been tight. I've been sluggish. I mean, I went for a long run a couple weeks ago and I, I just trudged through it. So I thought, you know what? I, I need more yoga in my life. So I actually did an hour last night. I've done it a couple times here in the last two weeks or so. Uh, so yeah, it's mainly been some very, very slow runs out in Central Park and, and, uh, and a touch of yoga. Next question. <laughs> no, uh, no, I've enjoyed it. To, to be honest, I never thought I would say that I enjoyed it. I think, uh, you know, for me, I've had, uh, I had two hip surgeries when I was 21. So, you know, I'm always looking to improve my hip mobility and, and, you know, strengthen my core and my glutes. And, you know, I don't think anything's better than yoga for that. So, uh, I don't know the poses or positions that well yet, so I couldn't give you one. Ryan's a big warrior too, guy. I know that for sure. <laughs> um, guys, you obviously touched on it a little bit, but how how important is that? You know, flexibility. You know, especially in the goalkeeper position. You know, it, people think of yoga, and you know, maybe some people like giggle at it, but it's super important. You know, not only for flexibility, but Ryan, you touched on like your core strength, really all around. But how how important is that for a goalkeeper? Yeah, I think for, for every every player, you know, goalkeeper, forward, midfield, defender, whatever whatever position you play, I think, uh, you know, the stronger core you can have, the stronger glutes you can have, hip mobility, all this stuff adds up. And, you know, I wish I had not maybe not necessarily started yoga, but I wish, you know, when I was 13, 14, 15, I focused more on stretching and before and after training because, um, you know, I think it, it, it can only help you. Um, and if you get into good habits at a young age, then you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for success. And, you know, I think, uh, it can really help you, uh, prevent injuries as you get older and your muscles are growing and you become stronger. I think it can, you know, the, the injury prevention is huge and picking up these little muscle injuries here and there. And I think, you know, if you could just be proactive with it, you're only setting yourself up for success. Preston, uh, we got a question for you and Ryan. I'll I'll take it uh, to you afterwards. But Preston, what really made you uh, get into being a goalkeeper and coach? What what you know? There's a lot of options. There's a lot of roads you can take after you know your playing career. But you know what made you really want to get into you know being a coach? Yeah, and let me I'll, I'll get into that in a second. And just to to follow up with Ryan talking about uh, Ryan talking about yoga. You know, even yesterday, Ryan, it just shows how much, how, how dramatically things have changed. I mean, remember yesterday, I think it was Kieran that talked about working on his hip mobility for with the cutbacks, uh, right? I mean, would we have ever talked about hip mobility, you know, 15 years old? No. So, 
um, yeah, I thought that was that was pretty cool to even hear that Jeremy's implementing that, and their fitness uh, coaches are talking about that already with those guys. So, uh, yeah, in terms of what got me into coaching Connor, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a it, it's a question where I, I it's, I'm not sure how I got into it at the beginning, to be honest. Um, I I finished playing. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I talked about uh, getting injured. You know, we touched on that, on that a little bit earlier ago. And it took me about a year to say, what am I doing? And I wasn't sure, actually. Uh, you know, I talked to a few people that, that, that ran some companies in Denver. You know, I looked into youth coaching. And then Jesse had been talking about uh, interviewing for some positions in the summer of 2012. And, you know, when he asked me, he was like, okay, you know, I'm not sure if this is right for me, to be honest. Uh, it's, it was almost like, yes, I want to, I think I, 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 I want to coach. Um, I want to work with Jesse because I just believe in him as a person. But it, I wasn't positive whether I was going to be a, a goalkeeper coach for the next, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years. Uh, truly, I got into it thinking, you know, I'll try this for a year or two. And if I like it, I'll stick with it. And since I got into it and I start and I learned that there's a lot more to it than just coaching. There's just a lot of discussion and, and movements of players and um, the, the, the scouting aspect of it. You know, once I realized how much there was, it was involved, there was involved uh, and then got kind of through that and then realized I actually like coaching quite a bit in terms of guiding players and trying to guide them into a path of success that to have success on a Saturday night, you know, the Monday through Friday trainings, man, that's really rewarding. And it's just, it's fun because I, I, I can sit back and I can watch guys thrive on the field and think to myself, yeah, I mean, I, I help them a little bit uh, to get there, you know, uh, you know, when they, they win a game or win, you know, uh, you know, in 2018 where we're sitting there celebrating on the, on the uh, supporter shield uh, on the field that night and thinking, yeah, I had a little bit of part of, to, to do with this. So, yeah, it's just fun watching these guys, though, play uh, and be successful. So, uh, But it took me a while to, to, to realize that, yeah, this is what I want to do. And Press, just, it's funny you say that, like watching guys and, and, you know, how you've enjoyed the process of seeing guys and critiquing them a little and, you know, building them up. And, you know, I think it, I'm night and day – uh, the goalkeeper that I was when we first met, whenever that was, 2016, I guess. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, we talk so much about the position, you know, whether it's talking about other guys in the league or breaking down film uh, of us both in training and of in games. Um, and now for me, working with uh, Kieran Dalton and our other friend Mikey, who's a goalie at uh, University of Albany, uh, over just over the last month or so, it's something that I would like to do in the future, I think. And I never thought I would have said that before, but um, just there's so many little things, especially with goalkeeping. There's so many little tiny details that they all add up. And, you know, if you kind of uh, break it down into these small details, you can build a good goalkeeper and, and, um, just the whole process of it, I really enjoy. And, you know, I think working with Preston for the last, whatever it's been, five, six years, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed it. And it's something that I could see myself doing when I'm done. Guys, apologies. Technical difficulties, obviously, in this day and age, you know, they're, they're happening more often than not. So, uh, <laughs> you know, guys, I think uh, we, we want to walk through kind of a big part of goalkeeping is your mentality and your preparation for penalty kicks. So could you guys each walk us through kind of how you prepare for them, not only in the moment, but also the week of and the preparation that leads up to it beforehand. Well, I'll, I'll start Ryan. And then it, because it's evolved from, from years ago, right. When I played. So for me, Connor, and then whoever asked this, but uh, you know, way back when there wasn't as much video footage as there is now. Uh, I mean, our video people are amazing and we have all, you know, every goal uh, penalty kick that players have, have taken in the last, you know, 10, 15 years. 
you know, for me though, it was, it was training if, you know, the day before a big game, like where there was potential penalty kicks. And then in the moment, trying to pick up something that they've done. I mean, I literally used to, uh, you know, you know, I would sit there and, and just say, look, I have a feeling and I'm literally just kind of guessing and I'm going left. Um, thankfully in the, the last penalty kick shootout that I was, that I was in in 2005, uh, I actually caught a few, I had this little notebook and I actually was on a VCR checking out games from years past. So that was the video footage that I did and it, it helped me save a couple in those games. But it was so rare that you had footage like that. I mean, it literally was like, well, I've got a feeling, I think he's going right and I'm going right. So there wasn't much to it back, back, way back when, um, you know, you try to, you know, think, do I get a good read on it? Do I hold for the last second? Little things like that, but it was just, it was almost just way more of a toss up. So yeah. And then Ryan, you can kind of take it from there. Yeah, I think, uh, like Preston said, uh, our video team is great at showing us clips. We always watch them uh, right before the game, you know, of maybe their two or three most likely candidates to to take the penalty. Um, and for me, it's great. The more information you can get uh, can only help you make a hopefully the right decision when you pick which side to go to. But um, for me, I, I like when, when watching those videos, I like, if for not necessarily, oh, he's gone here the past, you know, he's gone to the right the past two times. Like maybe he's going to go there again. That I don't take as much. Um, it doesn't hold as much weight for me. I like to see the guys run up, like see certain guys that have a, a big stutter or Joseph Martinez kind of does that jump and it, it really can throw you off. It throws you off even if you know it's coming, but if you don't even know it's coming, you almost have no chance. Um, so I like to see the run up, but then, you know, like Preston said, I, I like to trust my instincts too. Whether I see something in the guy's hips or, you know, for whatever reason, I'm thinking he's going one way. I think the biggest thing is you just go a hundred percent, whatever way you, you want to go, you commit fully um, and just go for it. And obviously you need a little luck on your side, but you know, when you, when you commit fully, I think you give yourself the best chance. Awesome. You know, obviously it's, you know, people think that, you know, they all can jump a net and, you know, save a penalty kick, but they don't really know all the preparation that goes into it. And, you know, uh, so you guys are saying you haven't, you know, held the little sheets in the goal, little notes that you take, maybe put them in your sock. No, nah, nothing. I do remember though, press when we won, the, we beat Philly in the open cup uh, in the shootout. Like we had the, you know, maybe the eight or ten guys that we thought could shoot, we had their uh, tendencies. A lot of guys, we only had one or two uh, pen like penalty history on them. Um, but I, I don't know. I still, I, I took a look at it. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't hold too much weight for me. I like to just kind of read it and go with my instinct. Love it. How about you, Preston? Ever ever have any notes uh, in the socks? No, I had I had a guy, Chad Brown. Uh, he had a couple notes that I had taken before a game years and years ago, uh, and he was raising his left hand or right hand. So I was speaking over to him on the bench, and, uh, and it, it, it worked a couple times. But it, and again, going kind of with Ryan said, I mean, you can take all this information, hold your ground, and then yeah, you have to kind of feel good just about going one way or the other. Awesome, guys. Who were who were your uh, goalkeeper idols growing up? This is from CJ. Um, well, for me, it was, it was always Tim Howard. You know, I grew up uh, uh, in Yonkers, you know, not too far from, from Red Bull Arena in the old Giant Stadium. And, um, you know, he was – when I was about 10 or 11 and really just getting into soccer, he was a young goalkeeper for the Metro Stars. And, um, you know, I – would go to a couple games with my dad and my brothers and we hung out one day in the parking lot and I got to meet him. He signed my ticket and it just kind of lit a fire under me that, you know, I wanted to be like him. He was a local kid um, who made his debut at a young age for the Metro stars. And, you know, I really followed his career from, from the Metro stars to, to Manchester United and to Everton and all throughout the U S national team. And, 
Um, and then when I was a rookie, he actually, and I was starting, uh, you know, before I got injured in 2012 and he reached out to me, uh, emailed me, just said, wanted to say he's been watching me and he's, he thinks it's cool. A local kid's doing well and he's rooting for me. And that was like, I was speechless. Like that was as cool as it got for me. And that's something I will never forget. And, uh, just this past year when we played Colorado, uh, you know, he made it known it was his last season. So I made sure to, to get his Jersey after the game. And, you know, I gave him mine. I don't know. He probably might've thrown it in the garbage, but, <laughs> no way. but it's still in my, uh, you know, I have it here in my closet and it, it's just, it was so cool. Very cool. And such a nice guy too. So that makes it that much better. That's awesome. How about you, Preston? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Cause we're about the same age. Uh, Casey Keller. You know, he was a guy that, that went from university and then out getting over to England and playing for Leicester. And, man, you know, I'm playing in these lower division leagues. I, I referenced Boston Storm in 95, and I played for the New Hampshire Phantom, again, a lower league. And then I was still in the second division. And here was an American leading the way for other Americans to, to go to Europe. I mean, he was one of the first ones to be truly successful over there. And, and, and then to be a goalkeeper, I really looked up to him and, and had a lot of pride that, that an American was over there and having this, the great success that he, he was having. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of an honor to, to finally, event, you know, eventually meet him, uh, met him, you know, at a random uh, a game down in California at one point when I was playing for Chivas. Uh, but, yeah, and then I got to, I got to see him uh, in his last year and I, I said, to, you know, I let him know that, you know, it's been it's been a pleasure watching him play throughout the years for what he's done for goalkeepers, and, you know, in general, and then for Americans to go to Europe, uh, and then three to come back to to the MLS and really put a lot into playing for the Seattle Sounders. So, uh, yeah, uh, a real a real great ambassador to to the to the game and to the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was a trailblazer for sure. And yeah. you guys can hear the way these guys are talking about, you know, other goalkeepers, you know, it's, it, they call it a goalkeeper union for a reason. You know, it's a, it's a fraternity. Obviously there's, you know, a, a less amount of them, you know, in the league than other guys. So they're definitely very tight. So if you're lucky enough to play at this level, it's definitely a close knit bond doing uh, all these goalkeepers. Uh, you have a question from Jalen uh, for the both of you. Who's the best goal scorer? You have one trained against and two played against. Good question, Jalen. Well, I'll start with on this one. The, the best goal scorer that I trained with was Ante Raz off of Chivas USA. I mean, he's one of the top goal scorers, scorers in MLS history. Uh, I mean, he just had this uh, shot that the, the ball came off his foot quickly. It was a quick release. And, and yeah, it was really challenging uh, to save. Uh, great challenge. Uh, and you always are excited when he's winding, winding up on you in the, in the session and thinking, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to save this. And, uh, often I didn't, but, uh, yeah, he was probably, probably the best. And then what was the second part of the question? And then who you've played against? The played best against, goal you've played. Uh, gosh, I played against Blanco a couple times. Uh, you know, and he was allowed to see a little bit older in his career at that point, but man, he could still play and he was fun to watch. And and the fans came out to see him, which made the atmosphere in the stadium so much better. I mean, he came to came to Colorado in two thousand nine, and it was it was it was just ridiculous at how many Chicago fans there were that that afternoon. But yeah, he made it he made it an enjoyable day. Yeah, yeah so he, he was he was he was a challenge. Yeah, they would they would flock in masses to watch him, and I don't think Chicago's ever recovered since he's left. I know those are the last great days in Chicago. <laughs> How about you, Ryan? Um, that I've played with, uh, it's tough to uh, narrow it down to one. I mean, you got to say Thierry Henry. Um, he was unreal calm. We got to see firsthand for three or four years what he was able to do in training, and it was unreal. He would do things when you would just your jaw would drop. Um, and it'd be between him and, and David Villa. Um, you know, I got to play with Villa at, at NYCFC for a year. And what struck me about him, this guy trained so hard. You know, he would take his days off here and there because he was getting older and 
But when he trained, man, this guy meant business. Um, and it was so cool to see, you know, when a guy like that is is all in and putting everything he has into training. But, man, when he was – he could put a ball every time, side netting, side netting, at pace too. Like you'd have to guess to save a lot of them and just take off early. And the one time you guessed, similar to Henri, he'd put it the other way and you look like an idiot. So these guys were unreal. And uh, I would say uh, BWP in that in that mix too, but he wasn't the best – in training <laughs> he stays them for games um uh no but brad was incredible he's a good a good friend of ours and uh you know his his goal scoring record speaks for itself um and then uh, that i played against uh i'd say via uh and you know my family's irish so i'd say robbie Keane is up there too he could just score one of those guys that maybe not the most skillful he's very talented don't get me wrong but one of those guys just had the had the knack for being in the right place at the right time, and all he needed was half a chance, and he was going to bury it. That's uh, that's quite the list that you guys just put out for us. Uh, you know, striking the fear in all goalkeepers' hearts out there. <laughs> um, we got a question from the Rebels Academy. Uh, how do you guys envision? You know, how does how the goalkeeping position is going to continue evolving over the next decade? Um, well, I think even just from when I got into the league in 2012, the demand, um, that every goalkeeper has to be comfortable with their feet. You know, I think when I started in the league, yeah, you had to be okay with your feet, but most teams were still playing the ball long a lot. Um, and that's evolved, you know, that's evolved. It's night and day compared to what it was, um, you know, 10, 20 years ago, I think, um, and I think, you know, to answer the question, then what I think it's going to continue to evolve. And, you know, I think you've even seen in the last couple of years when teams are uh, the best teams in the world are, are taking this uh, high pressure system <clears throat> or, or utilizing this high pressure system like we have. Um, you know, you look at Liverpool, they press the hell out of teams. So what that means then is the goalkeepers have to be off their line, ready for balls in behind. Um, and almost like a, like a sweeper, you know, and you're coming out of your box and it's the plays, you know, we've talked about a lot in the goalkeeper meetings with the academy guys that you have to get it right. Cause if you get it wrong, it's a red card or a goal or both. Um, so I think maybe if I had to say one thing, I think the game will keep evolving, um, into that where, where goalies have to be really comfortable coming off their line and out of their box. And that's the biggest thing for me, Ryan, right? I mean, you touched on the, you know, with your feet and things you had, the demand is higher and higher. And you've seen that now for a bunch of years and, and throughout the world. And now, you know, there's certain teams, specifically us as a club, right? Leipzig, Salzburg, us here in New York. Uh, and then, and the, you know, the teams, a couple teams over in England now that are, that are doing the same. But the connection is the biggest thing uh, I think that's happening with goalkeepers. And it's, and it's difficult. And, and, you know, it takes time to figure that out. But all the kids on this call are, uh, that have seen how it's done, it's, it's, it's amazing when you do it and you're like, wow, I just snagged a ball from 30 yards from my goal. I wasn't doing that a year ago. You know, and Ryan, it took you a little bit of time to get comfortable with it. But now you do it as if, yeah, that's just part of what we do. So, uh, yeah, I think in general, team, the teams are going to press and counter press and have a high line. It's just that, that's going to be the demand. Makes sense. Uh, guys, just two more questions. Um, Gavin wants to know, what are your expectations for your central defenders? Um, I think first and foremost, I just want them to be solid. You know, that's a position that's similar to the goalkeeper position in the sense that you're probably only as good as your worst play in a game. You know, you could play great, and then if you get, you know, if, if the forward picks your pocket in the last minute of the game, dribbles in and scores, you know, you're looking like an idiot. And so I think just solid. I want, I'd i like, you know, you look at our, our center backs, big, strong guys, good in the air, physical. Like, I want them, the opposing forward, to know that he's going to be in for a long day. 
you know, when he's going up against uh, against our center backs. And I think our team, you know, look at Tim, Aaron, Amro, Sean Neal, it's big, strong guys who, at the very least, they're going to be physical and make life difficult for the, for the uh, opposing attackers. Uh, yeah, and just to, just to add to that, I mean, everything that Ryan said there, and then also just from a coaching standpoint, to, to follow the tactics of the day, right? I mean, that's those two center backs slash potentially three center backs you have on the day, you know, they if they're implementing the, the tactics of moving the line and shifting and stepping and forechecking, uh, that makes everyone's day so much easier, so much easier. And again, you know, the goalkeeper's tied into the line. The center backs are stepping up. The goalkeeper's staying, staying with them. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a massive, massive part on, on, on game day. It's awesome. Um, last question. You know, I feel like we could talk to you guys all night, but it is Cinco de Mayo, so we don't want to keep you. I know there's some margaritas <laughs> calling your guys' name. But uh, last question for you guys. What advice would you give to our aspiring young goalkeepers out there to play at the top level? Go ahead, press. Start this one. Yeah. So it, it takes a lot, guys. It does. I mean, you know, all three of us here on this, the, the, that are on this call, we've, we've worked really, really hard. And you, you have to have a, an amazing mentality. And you're going to have to go through challenges. And you're going to have to go through disappointments. Uh, but, but if you stick with it day in, day out, day in, day out, you know, there you, you, you have a chance down the road. Uh, a lot of things have to fall your way, right? I mean, you stay healthy, um, right? Are you consistent for, for the next bunch of years when you kind of hit those late, you know, teenage years, early 20s, you know, if you go to college? Um, but the best thing you can do, guys, is just work hard. Show up, work hard, and and have fun. Enjoy it. Like, just think, today I'm going to have an amazing day. I'm going to go, I'm going to enjoy my teammates when I see them have some banter in the locker room. But when you step on the field, go for it, go for it and compete. Uh, but realize you've got an, uh, on that particular day, it's an amazing day. And then the next day, the next day will come, but push it every day. And then where life takes you, it takes you. But, uh, you know, if that's your goal, uh, you know, stick with it, believe it. Uh, but you got to work hard. You got to, you got to grind every day. How about you, Ray? Yeah, no, I think that's spot on. I think it's so hard to narrow it down, but if I had to pick two things is uh, you just have to love the game. And I think it ties a lot into what Preston said. You, Because if you truly, truly love the game and are passionate about it, going through the ups and downs, um, you know, whether you have a bad game, a good game, whether it's uh, – you know, training in some terrible weather or you're missing a big, you know, for us, a calm press and we've missed how many weddings over the years and, you know, it sucks, but we love the game. So that's just the sacrifice you're willing to make to do something you love doing. Um, I think when you love the game and truly, truly are passionate about it, everything else takes care of itself. You know, you, you, you get on this journey and, uh, ups downs you know a coach likes you a coach doesn't like you whatever the case may be your love for the game will get you through and obviously with that said you need natural ability but everyone we're talking to here if you're in the red bull academy you have natural ability um so i think that love and passion for the game helps with your mentality um and, and that can push you to really really high limits i think you know it's well, you guys in the academy, like the sky should be the limit, you know, dream big. And, you know, if you come across a coach or someone that doesn't rate you along the way, use that as fuel to the fire. Don't let that knock you down. And, you know, obviously it could be disappointing in the short term, but, you know, say, screw this guy. Like I'm going to, I'm going to show him in a couple of years from now, he's going to really regret um, whatever the case may be. He didn't pick you for the team or, you know, he didn't, you weren't a starter on his team, whatever the case is, I'm going to make him regret this and use that to, to, to kind of flame fan the fire, um, within you. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my long winded answer. <laughs> that was perfect. Really well said, Ryan. Yeah. Preston, Ryan guys, thank you so, so much for being 
here with us today. Obviously, we're so incredibly lucky to have you two as, you know, the role models for our future, you know, next generation of goalkeepers. Obviously, thank you to the young, you know, goalkeepers and the young players out there from the academy for participating with us tonight. You know, we hope you're all staying home, staying safe and staying healthy. And uh, we can't wait to see you next time on our Academy Guest Speaker Series. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Preston, <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much again, guys. Con, it was great. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. Thanks great for jumping Con. on the call. Appreciate it. Good see. talking to you guys. Take care and be safe. We'll see you guys soon. See you guys. Thanks again. Later, Con. See you.